The FA have been pioneers uh, for motorsport for the last 120 years. We continuously embrace change and we have to perform change quite periodically. We need to improve safety, that is a continuous process. We need to follow societal trends for technology, which is what we're trying to do. And we need to make racing always more exciting. And all of these things make it necessary to change regulations on a periodic basis. This is why we're changing the regulations for 2026. A significant part of the, in these regulations is always thinking about the fan and the people who watch motorsport. We uh, believe we made a step towards closer racing in 2022. There's also things we got wrong. We are trying to, to get it completely right now. We believe the racing will be much more exciting and much closer between cars. We expect cars to be uh, still very challenging to drive for, uh, for, to drive for the drivers. Uh, there will be a bit less downforce on the cars. There will be a few more things to look after for, for the drivers and uh, hopefully that together with the closer racing will make it always keep it a driver's championship and a big challenge for these uh, very intelligent and uh, talented individuals. The cars will have quite a, quite a visual difference to current cars. Uh, they will be a bit smaller in dimensions. We're trying to make what we call a nimble car. Uh, this is uh, cars that are small in all dimensions, also a bit lighter. Um, they will have some visual cues, the front wings, the, uh, the, the tires will be different, the rear wings. Regulations are a team effort in the FA. Um, there's uh, a few people who work on them pretty full time. We've got uh, a technical director, we've got uh, a lot of people specializing in key areas, safety, uh, mechanical, suspension, aerodynamics. All of these people work together and we have frequent uh, meetings in the FA. But additionally, we have meetings with the stakeholders, with the teams or the BU manufacturers in order to discuss them and we have periodic meetings with them. But we additionally ask the teams to do simulations for us, both on the aerodynamics, on the simulator. We've had drivers drive cars on the simulator to see if certain aspects of the cars are stable and they're not dangerous. So all of these uh, inputs and feedback we've had from these uh, people and uh, drivers and teams has been fundamental for us to create these regulations. It's not only the Formula One teams that have been involved in these uh, rules. Uh, we've had discussions with the car manufacturers all the way to the very top of their leadership. It is our objective to keep Formula One an area of innovation, an area of relevance to the road, to the road car. And for that reason, uh, when we incorporate certain technologies in Formula One, we want to make sure that they are relevant for the car manufacturers. So there's been an input primarily on the power unit in the early stages of these discussions. It is very important for us, uh, as well as a sport, to make sure that Formula One is an, an area of innovation and of uh, what we call the road relevance. The new power unit regulations, for example, they increase electrification, which is a reflection of what's happening in society. Uh, they're going towards sustainable fuels, which is what has to happen in society at a much faster rate over the next uh, decades. So we want to keep it all extremely relevant and a hub for innovation. So the 2026 car in terms of overall dimension will be 1.9 meter in, in width compared to the two meter we currently, currently have. Um, that is visibly the biggest change. So decisions were made um, a year or so ago, a bit less than a year, to go for um, what is also called uh, in a nimble car, so a slightly smaller car, less downforce, but with a big focus on less drag. The DRS in itself on the rear wing will not be used to allow or facilitate overtaking anymore. It will be used by default on every straight line by every car to just drop your drag level on the straight line and because this comes along some uh, strong benefit for the uh, energy consumption but also having higher top speed allows you to recover more when you're braking and on the straight line. Overtaking remains also a very important parameter for, for F1 and for the, for the future, uh, future and new regulation. It's going to be um, tackled in two manner. The first one is continue to 
um, have a narrow concept for the car, which reduces the losses generated by a car, which are negatively impacting the following car. Because it, to be able to overtake, you need to be close to the car ahead of you. And if you can't follow in a corner because it's generating so much dirt here that your car gets unstable and you need to pull away, then the moment you are on the straight line, you need to recover all that loss. So it's very important for us that you can kind of reasonably follow another car in cornering situation. And to do that, we need to make sure from the aerobo concept that the, let's say, amount of dirt here being generated uh, is not impacting too much the following car. That's number one. So you enter the straight, you, the car is fairly close to the other. To help the overtaking, since now both both cars will have rear wing open and front wing uh, flap open, we are going to allow to the car uh, behind to deploy more ERS, so um, electrical energy, for uh, a given portion of time um, during that precise lap. So right now with the DRS, you are be behind the car and within a second, ticks the box, you are allowed to open your DRS on a straight line. This will not be the case anymore. The logic will be the same. I'm close enough to another car. I am given an extra amount of energy for that one lap, which I can deploy the way I want. The extra amount of energy is defined. Um, and that will give that boost of energy um, to eventually give the following car a chance to overtake by the end of the straight line. The main goals of the 2026 aero rules is really to kind of focus on the re-establishing the, the following car performance. We really want great racing, so we want to ensure that the cars can race closely. So it's an opportunity for us to reset the the baseline level of the cars so they can race together, but also to make sure that the aerodynamics package is, is closely um, working with the power unit. Clearly the power unit has different characteristics with a greater electrical component, and that means that as the heart of the car, we really need to make sure that the aerodynamics complement that power unit. If you were to drop the 2026 power unit into a current car, the drag level, so the, 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 the energy required to pull the car through the air, is quite high, and that really wouldn't be uh, very well aligned with the characteristics of the power unit. Well, one of the main changes for 2026 aerodynamically is that the, the bulk of the drag of the car, the aerodynamic drag, comes from the rear wing. So in order to reduce the, the overall drag, we have an active element on the rear wing, very akin to the DRS system that we currently have. Um, although we have a slightly more elaborate system, um, we have more moving elements and they move to a greater degree. And as soon as you have a rear wing that moves, from our simulation work with the teams and with drivers, it was pretty clear that you needed to have an active front wing to match the balance characteristics. There are certain conditions where the drivers didn't feel comfortable with a car which had uh, an enormously forward aero balance, so lots of downforce on the front and not much downforce on the rear. So that led us towards the need to having an active front wing as well as an active rear wing. The difference between the DRS on the current car and the, the plans for the 2026 car really comes down to the way that we use the, the devices around the lap. Typically DRS is an overtaking aid and you would tend to grant DRS when you're within one second of a lead car. The difference with the 2026 car is that we'll be giving the cars the ability on their own to switch between these high downforce and low drag modes. So at various points around the lap, the driver will be able to switch into a low drag mode to give them the uh, performance down the straights where they're not grip limited. And at a certain point around the lap, as you approach the braking zone, you'll then switch back to your high downforce mode. So this is a, an active system that's controlled by the driver, although he'll get a trigger in the same way that he does get a trigger now to say when he can activate the system, and it will be fully driver controlled. And then it would switch back either under driver control or by a brake pressure. Certainly the aim for these regulations is to ensure a fantastic racing spectacle. Um, so we've been really focusing on making sure the cars can race closely. Um, the active aerodynamics is a part of that and really should help complement the, the new power unit. And as a group, we're very excited with the uh, prospect of, of seeing the cars 
how the cars emerge, how the racing is. We know what we think the cars might look like, but that will almost certainly be different to what actually comes out to some degree um, from the teams after their development cycles. So that's a really exciting period of, uh, of our uh, regulation writing phase. Starting point was in 2021 when we had meetings with the CEO of all five main uh, engine manufacturers, which were Renault, Ferrari, Mercedes, joined by Audi and Ford. The goal of those discussions was to decide all together what would be the main goal of those new regulations. The outcome of those um, never-ending discussions um, were um, three points. They wanted to have um, a cost which was controlled and reduced drastically compared to what they were spending uh, today. That was the point number one. They wanted to have sustainability as the main topic for those new regulations. And they also wanted to have the um, ERS, the electrical engine, being the focus of its development. For sustainability, they all wanted to put the focus on the electric engine while the combustion engine needed to remain, but being fed with fully sustainable fuel. In order to help the, the newcomers, we also wanted to make sure that we wouldn't give too much of an advantage to the current teams with all the experience they gained in the last eight years. And therefore, we had to remove the NGOH to have a fair, open fight with everybody in 26. From an expected 540 kilowatt combustion engine and 120 kilowatt MGUK today, we moved to a 400 kilowatt combustion engine, 426, and 350 kilowatt electrical engine. The way to achieve this change in performance was by reducing the fuel flow on the combustion engine, as I said, and to increase the battery size and the size of the electrical engine on the ERS. Thanks to a much bigger electrical engine in 26, we'll be able to harvest much more energy in the braking phase and then use that energy for the next acceleration. The thing I'm the most proud of with those regulations is that they have been issued now and that we were able with six engine manufacturers FOM and the FIA to reach a global agreement on all those articles. That was a big challenge, took us a while, but I mean, we did it all together. We're always looking at ways of improving the safety. This car's no different. We looked at the current car and we identified a number of areas where we felt we could improve. The front impact structure is one of the areas that we're looking to improve on. In the past, we've had a number of cases where the front impact structure has been knocked off by a glancing blow, leaving the car unprotected for any subsequent collisions. So what we're looking for at for 2026 is a front impact structure that acts in two stages. In the case of a glancing blow, it would break off approximately halfway down and leave a significant amount of impact absorbing structure left attached to the chassis. For the development of this, we've had the involvement of four of the Formula One teams who have helped us with the analysis and with the experimentation. Side intrusion is an important aspect of safety. It's been developed over many years, many times in reaction to incidents that have happened on circuit. For 2026, we've gone back and reviewed all the specification of the intrusion on the, on the chassis and redefined them. But the roll hoop is another significant safety feature on the car. After the incident in Silverstone in 2022, we reviewed the loads which were used to test the roll hoop. We increased these loads for the 2024 season, but for 2026, we're making an additional increase in those loads. I think the part of these regulations that I'm most proud of is the nimble cars concept. A smaller, lighter car 
with no compromises to the safety. Any new era in Formula One brings excitement and anticipation. Everyone can't wait to find out um, who will be most competitive, how close the racing will be, how exciting everything will turn out, the solutions that each team will technically introduce to uh, around these regulations. So all of that uh, makes me uh, eager to wait to, to fast forward until 26. I can't wait to see how these cars will perform in a couple of years' time.